So a roast dinner is not a roast dinner without a Yorkshire pudding. And in this video, I'm going to show you just how simple they are to make. You'll be wondering why you haven't done it before. First off, we're going to start off with our flour. Now, I'm just going to use a normal cup. Now, when it comes to making Yorkshire puddings, it doesn't matter what cup you use, whether it's an actual measuring cup or a drinking mug like I have here, as long as you use that same measurement for all your ingredients. We like a lot of Yorkshire puddings, so I use a mug. It's that simple. So we're just gonna have our mug of flour and add in a mug of milk. And then we're gonna add in a mug full of eggs. As I said before, it doesn't matter what size cup you're using. This would even work if you were in a kitchen having to serve a hundred people and using a two litre jug. Exactly the same measurements, exactly the same way of doing it. One of flour, one of eggs and one of milk. And it is honestly that simple. This is also the same batter mix that you would use to make um, a dish called toad in the hole. It's also what you would use to make the mini ones at Christmas time. You could make a massive one in a roasting dish. It's entirely up to you what you need it for. This recipe is so versatile and you just use it for all recipes of this nature. Now, if you wanted this batter to make a sweet dessert, all you would do is add in a quarter cup of sugar. And that's literally the only difference. And once all our ingredients are in the bowl, you're going to beat it within an inch of its life. And I mean that. You need to beat it and 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 beat it. And beat it. Some do say that it is good to have some of the lumpy bits of flour as it creates a bit of crisp, but personally, I don't like a mouthful of raw flour. So do make sure to beat it until all the ingredients are incorporated together. Um, and then leave it to sit for an hour or so if you want to. Season it with salt and pepper if you want to, you, but just make sure that you give it another good whacking before you put it in the tin. This is where you need to really pay attention and make sure that the kids are not going to come anywhere near you during this point. Okay, you need to add a little bit of oil to each of the muffin tins or into the tray if you're going to use a roasting tray or a baking dish or something like that. Make sure that you get the oil in. We're not going to be drowning them in oil. You only need a little bit so that they're going to fry on the bottom before they go in the oven. So I put in enough oil so that I can do two or three batches because that's what we tend to end up having to do. Now I have a gas stove and I've done this on electric stoves as well. It doesn't work so well with an induction hob, but you need to heat up that tin underneath because you want that oil to have gained it's smoke point. It's got to be hot enough that it's actually smoking. Not to the point where it's combusting, just to where there's a little bit of smoke coming off it, as you can see there. 
If you do have an induction hob, I suggest putting the whole tray in the oven at the hottest temperature that your oven will go for around 15 to 20 minutes. At that point, it will hit its smoke point and it will be hot enough to put the batter in. And once the oil has reached its smoke point, you want to turn that heat off and pop your batter in as fast as you can, but be really safe while you do it. That oil will burn you badly if it touches you. Also, you don't want to fill your tin or trays or little muffin tins as we have here any more than about a third full. Half is, yeah, your borderline on half, but around about a third is enough. Any more than a half, and you're not going to end up with that really nice divot in the middle because it'll pop up from the middle and become a rounded bun, like a popover. Please excuse the top of my stove. On this day, I was doing a lot of cooking and the cleaning was going to be at the end. Now, as you can see, those beautiful Yorkshire puddings have come out and they have their lovely little hollow in the middle. They've crawled, crawled up the sides and puffed up. They are beautiful. Wait, did I forget to tell you what temperature to put the oven on? Oh yeah, well, it's as hot as your oven can go. I'm not even kidding. As hot as your oven can go. And for Yorkshire puddings of that size, you're looking at about 20 to 25 minutes for them to cook. For a full-sized roasting dish, you're looking at about 35 to 40 minutes. As you can see, I'm just getting straight cracked on with getting the next batch in. That pan is well and truly hot enough to take the batter right now so that it can go straight back in the oven. So enjoy your Yorkshire puddings, my friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Give this video a thumbs up. It really does help the channel. And if you try this recipe and you haven't tried it before, please do let me know how it goes in the comments below. And I will see you again very, very soon.